we have to have psychological, I mean, maybe that we have to have crazy people. Okay, we have people who get upset about things, but they're not actually stupid. Okay, um, very simple theory. Can it throw light on, on anything in practice? Well, um, I think it can. But let me just, before I get to that, say, mention a very important feature that's been left out. Uh, I've supposed that the cost of production is always borne by the seller. Um, in practice, if somebody becomes an employee, um, it's, it, we, we often would argue that any production cost will now be transferred to the employer, to the buyer. So that hasn't been part of this analysis, the, um, you know, the you know, 2010, 14, 8, 14, 2, the, the 10, the 8, the 2, was I always interpreted as an effort cost which is borne by you under all um, institutional structures. Um, but we could certainly enrich the model and allow for cost sharing or cost transferring. So we could think of this cost as not an effort cost, but an actual uh, cost that appears in the accounts. And if you work for me, I might then, uh, you know, the deal would be I would pay that, whereas if you're independent, um, you would pay it. Now, to, to do that formally requires more work and we don't have time for it. But let me just say that to the extent that when you work for me, I am in charge of how we do business, it's very natural for me now to incur any transferable costs rather than you. Uh, when you're in charge of how uh, things are done, then it, it makes much more sense for you to bear the cost. So we could bring that in. And I just want to say that because we don't have that, then something which is very important in practice is missing here, which is that an employee is less has less incentive to reduce costs than an independent contractor, because an independent contractor bears the cost and therefore has strong incentives to be efficient. An employee, because they're just getting away, uh, doesn't have that incentive. So that's extremely important and it's missing from the model, but it, the model could be enriched to bring it in. I just want to, I don't want you to have the sense that I think that this has all the main things, okay, not at all. This is sort of a bare bones first attempt. But even with this qualification, I think the model can suggest, uh, can explain some things. So um, let me mention um, an important issue, which is uh, outsourcing. Uh, it could be uh, by a private company, but it could also be by government. So um, I wrote a paper uh, a few years ago with, with uh, Andrew Schleif and Rob Vishley, which was about which services should be privatized. And because, obviously, we didn't use this model because it wasn't available, we used the older property rights uh, literature model. And um, we argued that there are some services um, where it seems pretty clear that you can do them efficiently uh, through private uh, provision and the uh, municipal garbage collection as an example. So we said, you know, it makes sense that many cities uh, or towns privatize that. They don't have their own employees doing that. Um, so that's like independent contracting rather than employment. And uh, at the other extreme, and, and basically the reason is that you can write a pretty good contract. And to the extent you can write a pretty good contract, um, it's a bit like, okay, so I guess I, I just say this. Writing a good contract means that my value isn't going to depend very much on how you produce the good because I've specified the important things to me. So that means we're more likely to be in this situation where you may care a lot about how we do, which method we use, but because I have a good contract um, on quality, uh, I don't care so much. So with municipal garbage, you can sort of safely leave it up to the supplier. He, he or she will have strong incentives to do it efficiently, but your contract sort of indicates uh, in enough detail what they have to do so they're not just going to throw it on the uh, you know, people's lawns and so on. Um, at the other extreme, we argue that uh, fighting wars is something where it's probably very difficult to write a good contract and where uh, the buyer may care a great, that is the government may care a great deal about exactly how the war is fought than the supplier. So this might be a case which is closer to um, to this one, where, uh, sorry, no, to this one. Get it right. Uh, no, it was that. Right, 
I care a lot about the way the war is fought. You don't care very much uh, because it's very difficult to write a good contract. And therefore, employment is better. Um, and then maybe um, prisons is somewhere in between the two, where some, in some cases you can write good contracts and some you can't. Well, my point is this. Uh, we did that whole analysis using a different model, but it turns out this model uh, yields sort of similar conclusions. Garbage, yes, privatized. Wars, no, don't. Uh, prison somewhere in the middle. And I, uh, but, uh, you know, one really has to uh, do this. Uh, okay, I don't have, I, I'm sort of skirted over this. What I want to say is that it would be good to take this framework and re-examine in more depth the issues that we examine using a, a prior theory. I think we'll get, we can get similar conclusions, but maybe in some cases one will get different or more nuanced conclusions. Okay, whoops. So now my punchline, which is, um, so I mean, let me just stop there, pause there and say that um, I think this uh, bare bones approach um, can be applied to some actual situations like Okay, um, it's time to stop. So, um, to, I, I never end early, whatever I say I'm going to do, and this is no exception. But let me just summarize then what, we, what we've done. Okay, we started, basically, what I argued was that Coase asked this, this great question, or really two questions, why, why we have firms at all, why we have markets at all, okay? Um, it's been uh, tough to provide good answers for them. I've tried to explain why it's been tough. I think the, the Coase 1960 theorem has been a sort of roadblock, and um, we have to get over it, and um, I've presented a way forward, I think. But you can see why, uh, I don't know what you think of it, you know, I've had to bring in this psychology. One way to think of this is you know, the reason we haven't been able to get over the roadblock before is because it certainly would have been un unacceptable or unthinkable uh, 10, 20 years ago to write down uh, the kind of model I've written down today. It's just not something that it certainly couldn't have been done in 1937. Um, we, we needed behavioral economics to emerge. Now, some people might look at this and say, you know, you shouldn't be doing it now either uh, because we don't like models like that. But I hope you won't think that. I think this is um, a potentially useful way uh, forward. Um, eventually, we want to explain large organizations, not just two people. Uh, we want to explain sort of, things like this and things like that. Uh, we're not there yet, but my hope is that this kind of approach will eventually do us a little more so. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Because they're employment contracts. At the very least, people 
uh, you know, they don't work for nothing. So we've got some contracts there. But I guess my view is um, that we cannot understand, I certainly agree with, with Coase that you can't understand firms until you understand what's wrong with markets or what's wrong with contracts. So, you know, those theories typically do not explain why people couldn't solve their problems by just contracting with each other. Since they sort of never consider contracts, they go straight to, this is what a firm is about, but they don't ask the question, um, why can't we just agree that you will supply the widget to me for some price? They don't ask that. So I'm sort of starting, uh, if you like, by saying we need to understand the contractual failure, or the, well, I mean, coastal thought it was a market failure, I think it was a contractual failure first. So I don't think they've done that. But the second thing is that at the end of it, I'm getting out a theory where, which has at least some resemblance to what goes on inside the firms, in the sense that I'm showing why we want to fix the price ahead of time which looks very much like, and I sometimes get the employment contract uh, out of it. So, um, again, I think until you have a theory of that, um, you're not going to be able to have a theory of networks. I mean, it's not that what these people are doing, is, it's not that I don't think it has any value, but they're, they're, not, they're not worrying about the basics at all. They're sort of starting.